All right. Thank you all for staying to the end. Uh, today, I want to talk about Helm. And for those of you who don't know, Helm is the package manager for Kubernetes. You can think of it like apt, chocolatey, yum, or uh, homebrew. But instead of installing into an operating system, it installs an application into a Kubernetes cluster. Ooh. All right. Slides. Uh, for those of you who don't know, so there's different ways you can use a package manager. Uh, the first way you can use a package manager is to take the business logic for an application, and you can have one or two or three people who understand an application and how it runs in a system, and you can package it up and then ship it off to many people, hundreds or thousands of people, to install and run that application. Another way you can use it is to take your business logic for running your own application, and you can package that up, and you can repeatedly use it in your environment. Maybe your developers use it that way. Maybe um, you just use that for your own internal logic with your DevOps. It provides an environment for you to do that. And a third thing for you is some people still have environments where they have to take it from a dev environment to QA, maybe staging, and then production. And you can package up that same information and repeatedly use it and run it through each environment. And of course, we offer Helm as signed, cryptographically signed downloads for Mac, Linux, and Windows. We do support all of the major operating systems. But today I want to talk about Helm 3, the latest version of Helm that was just released last month. And Helm is similar to other tools you've probably used, but Helm 3 does commands a little differently than Helm 2. And so I want to talk through a few of those. The first thing is adding a repository. Helm repositories are collections of packages or charts that tell you information about installing an application into a cluster. And just like adding something in Git, you can add a repository. And once you've added a repository, you can search that repository. You can uh, see what's in it. In this case, we're running Helm search, and we're telling it repo because Helm search can search more things than just repositories, and then keywords. It can also search things like the Helm hub, which is a distributed metadata search of many charts that people are publicly hosting. And once you do that, you can install an application into your cluster. In this case, it's called MyMaria. In Helm 3, what's different from Helm 2 is a name is required. There is a flag to have it automatically generate a name, but by default, it now requires a name. And then you can use Helm list to see that it's running in your cluster, just like Helm 2, and you can use Helm uninstall to remove it. One of the big things that's different, though, is that Helm uses namespaces in Helm 3 in order to do everything. Instead of being cluster-wide, it's namespace-wide. So when you use Helm list, it's showing you what's in the default namespace. It's not showing you everything across all namespaces by default. This is the default that Kube Control and other tools will use. If you want to look at every namespace you have access to, you can use a flag the all namespaces flag, which will look at what's running in all of the namespaces. And here you can see more things are running. Now, if you want to use a command against just a specific namespace, there's the namespace flag, or for short, there's the n flag. And most commands accept that now. So let's talk about the architecture. In Helm 2, you had Helm talking to Tiller, a server-side component that ran in a cluster. And Tiller would then talk to the Kubernetes API. In Helm 3, we changed it, we streamlined it. Now, the Helm client talks directly to the Kubernetes API, and this streamlined the code, it simplified things, and it allowed us to do things such as when Helm communicates with the Kubernetes API, it uses the normal user credentials. So RBAC, authentication, and authorization work just like all of the other tools. And when Helm stores stuff in the cluster, because you know, Helm list and the other commands need to know what's going on, it's storing it by default as a secret in the same namespace the application's running in. And this is by default. There's other forms of storing things. It is a pluggable system. One of the other changes to Helm 3 is where the configuration is stored on the operating system when you're running the client. We now follow a standard called the XDG standard, which tells you where to store data, such as plugins, caching, and other configuration on your system. Helm supports this, which is really great for administrators who want to install plugins and other things on a system uh, where users don't have access to, because they can follow standard paths and names. 
Helm 3 also includes a client library that you can import into other applications. And this time we've made the client library a first class citizen. So in Helm 3, if you want to write your own application in Go that can work on charts and repositories and interact with a cluster, you can import this client, this package, and you can use it in your own applications. Another big change to Helm 3 is the way it does upgrades. It now uses a three-way strategic merge patch. It takes the new manifest, the old manifest, and really importantly, the live state. This is the big new change, and it creates a patch. And then it does an upgrade by patching what's running in the cluster. And if you're using something like a service mesh, this is really important because service meshes and some of the other tools now inject things into what you're running. They inject sidecar containers. And if we upgraded it without taking that live state, we could lose those injected sidecar containers. That doesn't happen anymore with Helm 3 because it just patches the parts that changed. So I want to talk about charts. Charts are the packages in Kubernetes or in Helm that deploy things into Kubernetes. It has metadata about the applications, default values, and templates that will be generated into Kubernetes manifests and run in the cluster. In order to take advantage of these changes, uh, start by, in the chart.yaml, setting the API version to v2. That's the very first thing, and you can start to take advantage of these new things in Helm 3. And the first change is dependencies. The requirements.yaml uh, used to exist in order to hold the dependency information. This information has now been pulled into the chart.yaml file. So all of this metadata about an application is stored in just one place, the chart.yaml file. A new feature is library charts in Helm 3. Library charts allow you to have manifests and templates that aren't rendered. When Helm sees that's a library chart by setting the type to library, it knows not to install it into a cluster. But it does know that another chart can depend on it and then import the templates. The design here is reusability. If you do a lot of the same things with your charts, you can put them in a library chart and then import them into your other charts and reuse them. Helm 3 also includes JSON schema validation. Alongside your values.yaml file, you can have a values.schema.json file that uses JSON schema to describe your values, what they should be. And when you run commands like Helm install, it'll validate that it meets the JSON schema. But JSON schemas can be used more than for validation. For example, that JSON schema file can be used to generate a user interface. This is an example of a tool for React that can take a JSON schema and generate a web form. It has enough information that you can now do more interesting things and build upon it. CRDs are a big change in Helm 3. Uh, CRDs are one of those things that we're growing and adding features on. And the very first thing was we made a big change. In a chart, there's now a CRDs directory. And the CRDs directory can hold the CRDs for you. This is where your untemplated CRDs go. And Helm will install them if they're not installed in the cluster. And if you don't have access to install CRDs, because we know some people don't have access in their environments, you can pass these CRDs off to somebody else, and they can install them. And then you can install the application yourself. With CRDs, though, this is a change from Helm 2. And if you want something to be installed in both uh, through Helm 2 and Helm 3, because we are supporting Helm 2 for a full year, there is a way to do this. You start by having your CRDs in the CRD directory, and Helm 3 will respect that and install there. Then for Helm 2, in the templates directory, you can have the same CRD using the Helm hook. Helm hooks are events, and there's upgrade hooks and things like that, install hooks. In Helm 2, there's a CRD install hook. And you can use the CRD install hook to install in Helm 2. Helm 3 will do its thing. Helm 2 will do its thing. And they'll ignore the other. It's even possible to have them in the CRDs directory and use a template function to just import them into a template. And so you only have to have one copy. Helm 3, we've decided to add the capability to do experiments. There are things we want to do that aren't quite ready to go yet. The technology is not fully formed, but we want to put it out there so you can see it, you can start to use it, you can give feedback. And the very first experiment that we did was to deal with OCI registries, things like Docker Hub and Quay. Imagine being able to stick charts inside of container repositories. This is where we're going with charts. We don't just want to have Helm registries. 
We want to be able to stick things into OCI registries and put them alongside charts. In order to opt into this experiment, you just set an environment variable, and then you're able to do it. And here, we set an environment variable, and then Docker, we're starting up uh, Docker registry. Now, this is the default Docker registry today because it supports it. And then we're able to save a chart to that registry. This works today, but it's an experiment. And this is because this isn't fully baked with the OCI. We're still working through specifications. We're still working out the details. And the API might change with working with registries. But this does work today, and it's an experiment you can opt into and give feedback on. And the way we've done it is in a way that we can add more experiments in the future. Now, what about upgrading to Helm 3? I've talked about configuration changes locally and the way it's stored in a cluster being different. We need a way to upgrade things. And the Helm project has decided to provide this as a plugin. Helm has plugins that you can install, and then you can add features to Helm. Now, anybody can do a plugin. The Helm project has one called Helm 2 to 3. And this project will do your upgrade for you. It has the move config commands, which will move your configuration on your local system. It'll reformat into the new XDG structure. It has the ability to convert a release, an application running in the cluster, from the old format to the new format. And it has the ability to clean up the Helm 2 configuration. It also has a dry run command, because we know that testing and trying this stuff out is really important before you actually pull the trigger on your production workloads. And so we have a plugin that will help you do that upgrade, and then you can discard it and be done with it later. And so that's Helm 3. If you want to learn more, you can head over to the website or join the mailing list or get involved in the conversation. Thank you.